Well, it is just about 4 o'clock in the afternoon on May 22nd. Yeah, that's about uh, 18 hours. No, 16 hours into the day. And I can smell the rain, so I'm going to try to get it, be ahead of the rain. It's supposed to rain, but we're all right. I've got my, uh, I've got my, uh, what's it called, the uh, new headlight on. So I've got two headlights now. a shift in pattern in terms of the weather and this will give us uh, a, a new pattern of weather that we're and this is what we're getting right now we're getting a stream of uh, we're getting a stream of weather uh, from the Gulf there that's basically what, 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 what would form tropical storms but uh, uh, everything sort of seems to be called, what I got the term, degassing over us. We were in the path of, there's basically the Ohio Valley, Texas through Ohio Valley, that's known as, or also known as Tornado Alley. And it, a large chunk of the heat from the south uh, sort of discharges over us and, and through that path. And this is sort of what we're experiencing. But, uh, in the last few years, it wasn't coming from the Gulf of Mexico. It was coming from the Pacific Coast, off the coast of Baja, California. Uh, and the Gulf weather has been sort of a, a sort of closed off to us. Now, once again, the Gulf weather has opened up to us, and we're getting the Gulf. is all of, uh, visible from my observatory. to reseat the mirror when I get back to my place. Well, get to my place, my second place. We're leaving my first home and going to my second home. 
I have my research desk with me in my backpack, or enough of it that uh, I can get a sufficient amount of work done. Something like that was behind me. much of a conversation today, or at least right now anyways, that happens sometimes, I don't have, the conversation isn't always there, and that's the way it is right now, there's no conversation, just the ride. People off to the races today. Although I don't know exactly where they're racing to, but anyways. The number of people who like my bike and took a look at it and see the scooter and 
yay for me, kind of thing, uh, far exceeds the uh, negative. And I guess it's it. For me, it gets the job done. Uh, I'm not more mobile. I remain independent of the government so far. And this keeps my uh, my status as anti-establishment. <laughs> Good, we made it here before the rain. So we'll see what happens tonight. That's what we'll do tonight. What happens on the way that out for a walk. Pretty good. Of course, it would be better during the day. I did some fixing up on the mirror, so oh, we'll see how it ends up going. Anyways, tonight was an interesting night. As I have a conversation with my parents and we watch TV and we finish the Barchester Chronicles, uh, I was doing some reading for uh, some of the research that I'm working on. Uh, found some uh, an interesting source. Okay. That provides a good chronicle. history of philosophy 
and it's from Stanford University. So it's uh, a, I would say, fairly reputable source, but the thing is, at the same time, um, sources must be checked against other sources. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. The reputation is one thing, but the actuality of it is something else completely different. And so, as reputable a source as Stanford University uh, is, there are still some other issues that need to be sort of checked out. And in other words, you, you're looking at other perspectives, points of view, uh, things that may not be considered by uh, Stanford University. Well, okay, I got too many cars coming. There's no way to get across quickly. And so you have to sort of. Uh, this is the whole issue: is you've got to find a way to sort of understand what your source is and how it comes about the information that comes about, and it also is about is the presentation of ideas that becomes paramount to, in addition to everything else. How an idea is presented or not presented it really does matter. Because it lends itself to different ideas. And different realities. And so this understanding must be brought into the equation. And because what happens is that different ideas are presented in different manners. So an idea is not necessarily plainly displayed as we would think it is. Because it would depend on, on the manner of display that was sort of sort of create the entire issue. Some cars move quickly while other cars move very slowly. And you have to kind of navigate between the two. Uh, and this is the same thing with Stanford. Stanford the, and the people who published the the, the, uh, the source all have particular biases. And you've got to sort of read through the biases. And let's try and large at the time the biases are not going to be obviously displayed, but rather they're going to be biases will come in the presentation itself. difficult thing to do. And what it basically shows is, is, is basically the information I'm finding is best described as death of an intellectual. It's the end, of, it's how the intellectual, intellectual area grew, evolved, and then eventually died, giving way to what we have now, which is the postmodern era, which is a pseudo-intellectual era. But the thing is, the, 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 the original intellectual era was false to begin with. 
it was based on ideas that weren't really true. It was simply assumed to be true. And this is sort of what we're lying, what we're dealing with today is that we're dealing not with the truth itself, but rather we're dealing with the assumption of truth. That we we assume that certain things are indeed true when they're not necessarily true at all. It just depends on the perspective. And this is a difficult thing to deal with, is because the research takes an enormously long time to do. Like, I gotta spend another six months to a year working on this. Because there's so much information to go through. And it basically, it basically believe, begins in the ninth, in, in 17, basically in 1750 is where the origin starts. And particularly starts with Voltaire. And it evolves its way through to basically uh, the 1800s, which is you now the full range of the, the Victorian era. And then from the Victorian era, it moves into essentially what we call the Fortean era, which we just exited sort of in the 1960s. The 1960s was the end of the Freudian era. And it began the beginning, the birth of what we call the postmodernist era. by a psychologist, uh, two psychologists to, 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 to be clear, um, Timothy Leary and Ram Dass. That's your, that's your, that's your, your beginning point to understand what happened in the 60s, but there's more to it. A lot of times when I talk about points, these are point, these are entry points. And I can't get into all the specifics because there's so much involved that it's difficult to do in one particular vlog. You have to do it this over a series of vlogs. Okay, that's why it's so dark here. One of the lights are out. It is difficult to convey, convey not only experience but difficult thoughts in simple terms. So you have to think about things. You have to think about what you're saying. And again, not only what you say but how you say it. The presentation, and in many ways, does matter. And that's why we remind people. Well, I remind people, anyways. That this is a, the vlogs are notes. It's not the final product. It's not the end product. But then again, I don't think we'd ever get to the end product. So you publish your notes. If the end point is elusive, and there's never going to be a final product, you have to publish the lead up. rather than fi publishing the final product.
my back is sore. The mirror is not working as well as I hoped it would work, but it's it's sufficient. What happens is as we move along, the the, the scooter bounces so much, and the, the mirror changes its position. So that's not well ideal. Anyways, this is gonna take some getting used to. Uh, I got the head, I got the headlight on, so um, uh, my my invisibility, my visibility in terms of people seeing me is better. Uh, we'll do the same thing tomorrow night. We'll do the same uh, ride with the same light. Even though the other light, the main light, is working, it's fixed. It was simply a loose connection, a tap on the window where the light was, uh, reconnected everything and seems to be uh, all well and secured. But, uh, a little bit of a wide turn. That's the night. I'm riding home a little fatigued. So. And that just said the caution is, is uh, 